This is the intro. Hello, everybody. And welcome. We're doing Bullet Train. I'm making noises. I don't know what to do. I was told to lead. I'm panicking. I'm falling apart again. This happening again. This is what happened last time when you put me in charge. It's falling apart. Anyway, hi. I'm I'm Mark and Cheese. That's my name. I'm joined here by... That's great. Uh, so, today... <laughs> <laughs> today, I was just gonna stay silent to see how long you would just start cracking more under pressure. I was just like, uh, today it's just me and my inner demons. <laughs> it's like every other day. <sighs> Marcus, just chilling in this fucking corner. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what's up, Shadow Demons? Uh, we all of us and my multiple personalities watched the movie Bullet Train today. Yes, we did. Uh, so basically, describe our format for those who do not know, because I'm Mr. Beefy, Ultimate Beefy, aka Dylan. Um, the movie reviews goes as follows: We talk about a unspo- uh, no, sorry, a spoiler-free version. He's panicking. Um, He's panicking yeah, like I was panicking. panicking. Help. We're panicking. Help. We're, it's Help. falling apart. We what do we Carlos. do? What do you do? Carlos wants yeah, to watch movie's... the Super Bow. Yeah, Carlos picked this movie. And he's and not he's here. not here for his own movie. Yeah, because so he because the Super Bowl is more important apparently. I mean, it's American pastime. To fuck, fuck Carlos. <laughs> right? Well, you were there last week. I'm there this week. Fuck Carlos. All right. So, we're gonna have a little spoiler-free uh, segment. We're gonna give our initial reviews. Yep. Then we're gonna go to the spoiler-filled, where we're gonna go through basically the entire movie with cliff notes and everything yep. like that. Yeah. Uh, there's there's not the a lot of that... notes for this movie other than what the fuck. And it's two hours long. Yep, um, two, two. He was just complaining about how fucking long all of the movies we pick are, and then he picks a two-hour and like six-minute movie about bullshit. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, the movie we saw was Bullet Train, featuring Brad Pitt, with yep. uh, a couple of surprising guest cameos. Don't know how this movie pulled those off. I, uh, um. Uh, <laughs> Dylan's dying. Um. Sorry, I, I'm dying. Allow me to drink a little bit of my. Prime. Yeah, no, no, no more, no more. No Prime more, is brought to you by Logan Paul. No more sponsors sorry, that aren't sorry. actually sponsors. Yeah. Uh, th- this, just to let everybody know, this podcast is brought to you by Air. Air. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> Breathe it in. Otherwise, you'll die. Anyway. Seriously, though, if anyone wants to sponsor us, please sponsor us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I so will sell movie... my body for money. I mean, sell out. <laughs> Can can we can we cut that? I, I'm asking myself. No, in the we're future, keeping that. We're am keeping am that. I gonna cut? I I don't see myself cutting that. Fuck you, future. You're, you're rarely gonna cut anything, mother. <laughs> no, no, I ain't cutting shit. All I, right. Anyway, so, we watched a movie. Yeah, this movie was just okay. It was pretty mid. You know, um, honestly, before we started this review, I had I was talking to my sister, and she had mentioned Megamind, and I was like. We should make a review for this movie like Megamind, because that's all I have to say about this movie is it was okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was okay. Um, nothing I could really talk about other than that. Brad Pitt plays Brad Pitt. Yeah, Bla- Blad. Brad Pitt. Blad. Yep. He plays Brad Pitt. Uh, the movie is filled with random characters with random backstories where random events happen on the random bullet train. Um, and then there's lots of shooting, uh, there's, like, maybe one or two times when they do actual action, otherwise the rest of it's kind of, like, random bullshit, which is kind of the theme of this movie. There is a story, but it's also not meant to be taken seriously. This is a movie that's a bad movie that's bad on purpose, and is trying to be funny about everything, and it has a few scenes where it's like, that was kind of funny, but a lot of it is just kind of like, why why okay shit's happening this movie is shit's happening you want to watch a movie about shit happening this is your movie you don't care you want to turn your brain off and just watch pretty flashing colors and shit happen on the screen boy have i got the movie for you that's this one um Dude, this is this is just a, a higher budget triple a version of hardcore henry that's not first person yeah only the story made slightly more sense. more sense yeah it it, um, it made a consi- coherent consistent story not necessarily a good one but it was there um the main antagonist she was uh unbearable irritating 
technically the main antagonist was not even her. She was technically a co-antagonist to the big overarching threat that you keep hearing throughout the entire movie, which yeah. was done very well. Very good intro to a villain. Yeah, he was good. It, it, the movie was very flat until you get to the actual main baddie being introduced. Yeah, the last 10 to 5 minutes of the movie. Right. And I would say that for an action comedy, there was not a single time that I laughed, except twice. There's only two times I really laughed. Ah, you have my review of Hardcore Henry. I laughed twice. That's why this movie's not a zero. (laughs) Uh, Even then, I would Uh, say that the sound design was really good. I love the sound design. I thought it was great. I, it was hilarious that they had, like, uh, typical songs you hear over here in America in uh, Japanese. I liked that. We, I did not know I needed a Japanese dub of I Need a Hero until I heard it. Until I heard it, and I was like, this is fucking great. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is going on my Spotify. I don't give a fuck if I have two copies oh. of it. I, this is going on the Spotify. Um, but yeah, I guess my initial non-spoiler score would have to be uh before i talk more in depth on this i i would say i'm sitting at a five i'm just my hatred of this it does not go further than my dislike it's mostly negative but still not enough for me to say it's bad bad yet without talking more in depth so where are you at dylan starting at a zero so uh okay no no no, i'm joking i'm joking (laughs) So if I were to start, let's say like I just wrote a script and the movie just a zero so far and I haven't given a score. Mm-hmm. The storytelling and the pacing of the story were kind of off and the story itself was mid at best. Mm-hmm. Um, the sound design was the only part that had me like, hell yeah, I love this movie. I'm going to remember a lot of the songs from this movie. Yep. And they're on my Spotify. That's an instant dub in my heart. Yep. And the cinematography, camera angles, the CGI and everything was done beautifully it was beautiful yes but yeah you you fucked up when you try to make a comedy not funny yeah yeah so i'm gonna start off at a three okay i think that's the lowest score you've started any movie off so congratulations score that i've given so far congratulations to bullet train we're making history here all right (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh also Oh. Can I just say real quick, mm-hmm. one of the things that made me laugh was not a joke that was intended. It was actually a sponsorship that was in the movie. And I'll get into that when we get to the sponsorship. <laughs> I, I bet I know which one it was, too. Yep, <laughs> you know what I'm talking I, about. It probably made me laugh. I think I laughed at that one, too. Um, All right, so this is the disclaimer here. We're going woo. to the spoiler-filled part. This is we the show spoiler-filled. Um, we will. Go we watch woo. the movie. It. I'm, Brad Pitt. Yeah, it's... That's all I'm saying. This Pitt. movie is Brad Pitt and shit happens. Uh, it's hippie Brad Pitt. So we're not getting yeah. like cool early 2000s Brad Pitt. Hippie we're getting Brad namaste Pitt. dude bro Brad yep. Pitt, which I didn't hate, but I also no. was like, bro, <laughs> come on. Yeah. The fuck? All right. If you're still watching this, that means you already watched the movie or you don't give a fuck, which uh, congratulations. You either wasted two hours of your life or you're saving yourself two hours. Those are the yeah. two options. Um you can't turn this video off. It's not allowed. Don't even try it. I because I know where you live and I will find you. I'm in your closet right now, making sure that you listen to this video. I I agree. He does know where you live. Yep. All right. Uh, so this movie, it starts off with a child in the hospital with a somber, serious tone. Um, yeah. Some dude's kid is in the hospital. Uh, he's sad. He's like, what happened? He was. He fell off a building. Um. And it's like his grandpa comes in and they're like, oh, yes, these are clearly mob uh, Yakuza guys because they're talking about the family business, dangerous shit, whatever. So we're introduced to our first character. I think his name is just the father, right? The elder. Or no, are you talking about the, the, the father that's... Uh, no, the father of the kid. I think his is just the I think the he is just the father or the son. Yeah, because the elder is his dad. Correct. Uh, yeah. They also, on the news in the background, there is a recent report that the famous Billisong snake, uh, that yes. is highly venomous and toxic, has been uh, stolen. Has been kid has been stolen, and be on the work lookout because it could kill you with its bite almost instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is important for later. Then after Kinda, that, yeah, yeah, it cuts to Brad Pitt. After that, finally, he's walking down on 
uh the streets of i don't know where he's supposed to be because he ends is he in tokyo and he ends up in kyoto or is it the other way around uh the end goal is kyoto and he's actually not in tokyo if i'm correct he's actually a little bit more south near osaka oh okay i i just see bright lights busy city in japan i don't know the the landscape or anything there so i just say oh yes is this tokyo uh is this mount fuji (laughs) it's snowing on mount fuji um that's how you have to end every haiku right sorry uh you're correct it was i just looked up to confirm it is starting in tokyo i thought it was osaka yes (laughs) it's actually one of the most busiest and most well-known uh trainways the iwate prefecture honestly really big uh, train I'm super jealous of the train system in Japan. I wish we had, like, cool public transportation that just can zip you around everywhere. God, I would love to ride the train. (sighs) Anyway, uh, he's talking to his handler. We get some funny back and forth about being nervous, starting another mission. Um, And he's filling in for an agent that was supposed to take this job named Carver. mm -hmm. Uh, But Carver had a stomach bug or something along those lines. Yes. And... Brad Pitt, a.k.a. the Ladybug. This is the first of the code names we get. Yep. The Ladybug has to take care of this entire situation, which is is as simple as steal a briefcase. Yep. Uh, He has to steal a briefcase. He gets on the train. Uh, He immediately loses his train ticket because he bumped into the father uh, on the way to the train. And he lost his keys for the locker. And we immediately get the sense of, okay, he's very incompetent. And he's like, oh, I'm just not lucky. So that's the and he's setup. also very chillax about the situation. He's like, eh, it's whatever. I'm just not lucky. It is yep. what it is. And you might be wondering, why is the father who is at the hospital there? Oh, yeah, because he got a note. And he's going to go assassinate the per- person that pushed his little boy off of the rooftop. Yep. It, it, everything is very convenient that it all ties together in this movie. Yeah, um, which they explain that a little bit later that you know, we'll get there. Yeah. Because there's multiple. There's not just Brad Pitt. And there's not just the first assassin, which is the father, who's trying to assassinate the person that uh, tried to kill his son. Right. But we're, we then get intru- uh, instantly introduced to my two favorite characters. Yes. Uh, Lemon, Lemon and Tangerine. And Tangerine. Mm-hmm. Two British twins. At least that's what everyone calls them, twins. Yep. Uh, no one knows what look- they look like, though. <laughs> exactly, which is <laughs> the best part. Because <laughs> they do not look anything alike. Nope. Um, they're sitting there having a good old chat they're both very British, and uh, they're just talking about the briefcase and the situation that they're in. Um, and for some reason, Lemon keeps making analogies to Thomas the Tank Engine. Yes, which introduced the premise that pissed me off and was annoying at the beginning of the movie to being one of the greatest things through the movie. <laughs> what, you didn't like the Thomas the Tank Engine thing? No, when it started, I was like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, I don't care. Like, you're... Damn, Mark, is that some real diesel energy? I, it is. It, I had some real diesel energy at the start of this movie, and boy, did I come full circle. Um, Derek gives off Percy energy, just saying. Yeah, he's he's a strong Percy. Forget horoscopes. This is the year of the tank engines. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> like, my, my catchphrase for this movie was just, what the fuck? Because that was the first <laughs> time I said it. And... Every time something happened where I was like, oh, I was just like, what the fuck, audibly. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was saying, uh, he compares the guy that they, I guess not kidnapped, they rescuing rescued the main antagonist's son. Because their mission is to bring the briefcase and the son, which is the ransom money and the son, back to the main bad dude. Which we could just go ahead and say his name so we're not saying the bad dude the whole time. The White Death, which they introduced quite early. Yes. Um, they find out that there is this one uh, Yakuza leader who took on this uh, former Russian mafioso uh, member and fled to Japan who proved himself by kicking everybody's ass. And then later on, he actually uh, portrayed that same Yakuza. And then you find out that um, the White Death is actually uh, basically the new Yakuza leader. He's like basically one of the new big names in the area. Yeah, and he he's is. just been growing and growing. Yeah, he is the biggest Yakuza because he took over the oldest, biggest one. And you find out through Lemon and Tangerine that he's actually been kind of very more cautious because there's not only... Um, well, you. I'll get into that, that bit, but you basically find out that his wife died. Yes. Through a tragic car accident. 
And so they're supposed to bring the son and the ransom money back. Uh, and that's when uh, Lemon, right? It's Lemon who does all the Thomas stuff. Lemon is the goofball. Yes. Tangerine is like the hard ass. Yes. So Lemon starts off with his Thomas analogies. Uh, and he calls uh, the White Death's son a Percy because he's a little bitch. Which right. was after the fact it's funnier but the first time i was just like annoyed with it and that's when he starts talking about how diesels are the problem people that's the ones the... always starting up shit and causing problems and tangerine's yeah. like if you say another damn word about thomas tank engine i'm going to slap the shit out i'm gonna sh- no i'm gonna shoot you in the face yeah and <laughs> um and then they get into an argument about how many guys they killed uh trying to save the sun which that was kind of funny because they're like counting them as they kill them in all these ridiculous ways. And the last one, it's an innocent civilian that gets blown up by the car. And he's like, oh, but he doesn't count. And it's like, yeah, but he's still a casualty. But it, was, it wasn't it was our fault. It was not our fault. Yeah. <laughs> so then we cut to um, basically the assassin. We go back to the assassin and the father He's about to go to the seat, and when he goes to pull out his gun and shoot someone in the face, it unveils this little girl in yeah. all pink. My he's like, oh. least favorite character. Fucking annoying through the whole movie. Deep, deep, uh, my deepest apologies. I was looking for someone, and then she immediately pulls out a taser, tases him in the throat, and says, yep, that person was me, and knocks him out. Yep. Thus unveiling the new character, the prince who was the pseudo antagonist of this whole thing, who you really never know what their motives are until the very end. Yeah. And they keep talking about how they're the smartest and no one else can surpass their in- intelligence. And they're so cool. And they have the biggest dick, blah, 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 blah. I'm the greatest. Yeah. Fuck yeah. you. I hate. And it's like, Ugh. it's like, cool. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. There's a good way to do that character where they think they are the greatest. And that was the wrong way they went about it. She was just, just annoying the whole time right then brad pitt aka the lighted bug we cut back this, there's a lot of cutting in this movie by the way yes like cut 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 um the movie cuts back to this uh, is the ladybug this is when correct. the tragedy happens where we're robbed of the greatest character of all time so the ladybug <laughs> takes the briefcase and then takes it back to basically the snack bar and alcohol bar yep and the stop comes up and he's ready to get off. He's like, oh, that was fucking easy. Um, which then someone enters at the door to stop him and tries to stab him with a knife. And that's and we when cut away it, again. And it cuts away to his backstory. <laughs> Basically, yes. Uh, uh, we do get a little bit more insight where like Lemon and Tangerine between all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Because it just shows that this dude that's pimped out. By the way, this new character that goes to try to kill Bad- Brad Pitt is the rapper Bad Bunny. Yep. who at the time of this filming just got done doing a match at WWE's WrestleMania that I was at. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know he was so that there. W- yeah, he was there. So it was cool to realize, oh, shit, he filmed a movie right after this match. That's that, so cool. That's awesome. Um, So you find out with Tangerine and Honey that they have this kid. And then when they go back to try to find out, hey, where the fuck's the briefcase? The kid is dead and he has blood bleeding out of his eyes and he's yeah. just straight up dead. So, then we cut back to the wolf, uh, which is the name of this new character, played by Bad Bunny. Yep. And we get his amazing backstory and the funniest... <laughs> the funniest He says product. close to only three lines in the whole movie. <laughs> and he has the best product placement I've ever seen. <laughs> and this wasn't the part that made me laugh, by the way. This, oh, this was not even close to one of the parts that made this, me laugh. This one killed me. <laughs> when it cuts to them all drinking, and the main uh cartel guy uh he lifts up his beer and it's just corona light like right in your face yes <laughs> presenting it and he has <laughs> one of the coolest backstories because he's like you know a young kid growing up the street becomes a thug grows I, up, before before starts. you explain this i was not interested in this movie until this character came in and i was like oh oh he's kind of cool oh okay I, i'm kind of down for this this is why this movie was a roller coaster for me because I was so not interested, and then it pulls me in a little bit, right? It starts to pull me in, and then it fucking slaps me and says, "No, you're not interested in this movie anymore." So 
they explain his backstory where he was a young kid up and coming and he basically became like one of the big kingpins of like the mexican cartel yep. which was so badass of an upcoming yep. he then has a beautiful wedding with the love of his life and then when uh, a waiter who we find out later is brad pitt um spills wine on his white tuxedo yep he just walks away to go get it washed Yep. Then he comes back because he got to miss the part where they're eating cake and everything that everyone at the wedding died, including his loved one. And his whole event story was, I'm going to find the person who did this to my loved and I'm going to murder them. Yep. And of course, I guess upon recognizing who Brad Pitt was or the ladybug, his instant go to was, I'm going to kill this man right now. Yep. Pulls out a knife and then they start going and throwing down. <laughs> And Brad Pitt it was one of the funny. This was one of my favorite parts with him as a character and the way he was. Because, like, bro, I don't even know you. you <laughs> yeah, that loved. was funny. <laughs> just He's trying like, to stab him and shake him. Like, but I, I literally don't know who you are. Like, can we just talk this over? <laughs> just tries to kill him every time. Yeah. He fucking tosses the knife at Brad Pitt and it bounces off the case and lands back in him. <laughs> and then he's dead. I mean, he's dead. That's it. They're like, look at how awesome this new character is. And he's gone. It's like, Literally, Bad Bunny had the shortest screen time of one of the most no, 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 no. characters. He had plenty of screen time in this movie. <laughs> he, I feel like he needed more. <laughs> it, it was gone he, too quick. He just doesn't say anything for the rest of the movie. He's in the rest of the movie. Oh, you're right. You're right. He does have, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, so Brad Pitt just sets him up on a chair, and he just makes it look like the guy is just drinking a bottle of rum and looking out the window. <laughs> so and then he puts the br- he yeah. puts the briefcase in a uh, in basically a trash bin after he stole it originally and walked past the prince and all these other people. Yeah, it just throughout the movie. I love when it cuts to him just dead, just sitting there chilling as random other shit goes by or is happening. It's always cuts back to him, and he's just there. <laughs> right and uh, then afterwards you get this moment where tangerine and lemon find out that the person who stole the money was a dude with thick framed glasses which was happened to brad pitt's character yep as uh also there's a side plot where because he uh the ladybug forgot his um ticket and lost it there's the train conductor who's just basically like Get the fuck off my train. You don't have a ticket. <laughs> yeah. Next stop, you're off this train. Get the fuck <laughs> off my train. <laughs> and when that comes into the conclusion that Tangerine is about to pit, uh, pin in on him, he sits down next to a random passenger, which is one of my, which is the first of these cameos of big time celebrities. Channing Tatum's just sitting in the train. Yes. Like, hey man, you want to make two hundred bucks? <laughs> I mean. Is this like a sex thing? <laughs> and that was the first time I laughed in this whole movie. Was that? <laughs> and that was like that joke ha- kept going on for like three separate sections. And every time Channing Tatum mentioned, "Is this a part of the sex thing?" It just <laughs> made me laugh because I just love Channing Tatum. <laughs> so he swaps clothing and everything, and then Tangerine sees the dude with the uh, fish fishing hat glasses, puts a gun next to his head, says, "Where the fuck's the money?" And then Channing Tatum asks. Is this a part of the sex thing? <laughs> <laughs> then when Tangerine walks by, he goes, he does have a nice butt. Good legs. Oh. So it's like, damn it, Channing. <laughs> um, uh. Shortly after that, we go through several fight scenes where uh, Ladybug and Tangerine are fighting in basically the um, train attendance area, where, kind of where they fill up snacks and drinks. Yeah. And... Uh, the, they stop. They stop like, fighting. This is that where uh, he gets the sparkling water. Yeah, they stop mid-fight because a, an innocent person just walks by, asks if they can fill up their stuff. She asks them basically in Japanese, "Are you guys okay? You guys doing good?" And they're like, "No, yeah, no, we're doing fine. We're doing great." And <laughs> Ladybug, aka Brad Pitt's like, uh, "Can can I get a bottle of water, a sparkling water?" Uh, I just give my I got give just give my last money to that uh, dude back there. You got, you got, you got money. <laughs> As Tangerine to buy in the water, <laughs> and, and he's like, "All right, all right." After she leaves, he's like, "Are you sure we can't talk this out?" No, we can't. Absolutely not. And yeah. just throws the water ball at his face. <laughs> Pop. 
And it sounds like we're laughing at this because it's like the movie had funny bits. It's only, to me, it's only funny because we're talking about them afterwards. Yeah. Like when it was happening, you're just kind of like, all right, that was random. It's funny how bad this movie is. That's what's funny. The movie itself is not funny all the time. It, it tried to take dry humor and elevate it, and it just wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened after that? What's bad is a lot of this movie, I just don't It just kind of blurs together don't... because shit yeah. happens the whole movie is really it. It's, uh, I, we can, we don't have to recap the whole movie every time. We could just talk about what else. Bullet well, points and highlights. Um, yeah. some other parts happen later on. We then find out that, uh, the prince basically has been trying to assassinate the white death this entire time is going to use the father as a tool. She yeah. basically rigs his gun to explode and shoot the bullet backwards. Yes. Um, and basically launch it into the shooter's face, which the thing about the White Death is every assassination attempt that he's had, he he has used the own person's weapon against them. Yep. Um, and so he's going to, she's going to basically use the father as the assassin. And if he doesn't comply or tries to kill her, then, she, you know, there's an assassin on standby that's going to kill his kid, his son that's in the hospital from the beginning. Yeah, and I believe she she also de- uh, rigs the case to explode, so that way if he opens to check the money, that way that'll kill him. Correct, because um, somehow she knew the exact location that Brad Pitt put the money, and yep. just walked back there, found it, did it. Yeah, uh, plot armor. Yeah, basic plot armor, found the briefcase, left the father in the bathroom, said figure out every combination there's going to be at least 999 different combinations have fun yeah um uh, i'm gonna go do my own thing yeah and then you find out a little bit later uh the rest of the movie what's... is like them stalling every time the train stops like him and tangerine uh brad pitt and tangerine stalling the stops so that the white death doesn't kill them all before that my before that one of my favorite uh scenes with lemon and tangerine is that there's uh-huh. a first stop where White Death wants uh, them to basically like do a checkup of everything. Oh and yeah, I, make sure uh-huh. everything's good. And it's like, okay, you're gonna stop there. You're gonna, I'm, we're gonna see my son. And we're gonna see the briefcase, and we're gonna be good, right? Right. Okay. So th- then they're gonna pass it off. Tangerine comes out by himself and shows the briefcase, and the son who's already dead. Basically, you have Lemon hitting, hiding in the background, and they pull off a weekend at Bernie's. Yep. Makes them excitingly wave, and he gets back on the bullet train, and they dip. Basically tells White Death's goons, get off my ass. Uh, oh, the other important thing that happens at this point is I believe Brad Pitt has let the snake out. The snake that went missing has got, was on the train, and he accidentally let it out of the cage. Yes, and this snake becomes a vital plot point, really, but not really at the same time. It's just constantly there for some reason. Yeah, throughout the movie, there's always a scene when it's two new characters on screen. Where the snake slithers through, they look at it and go, "Why the? F- it's a fucking snake!" And I, I, every time that happens, it takes me out of the movie, and I go, "Oh yeah, that's me right there watching this movie." Like, "Do fucking what? What is happening?" <laughs> so, Channing Tatum, not sorry, not Channing Tatum. Uh, Brad Pitt lets the snake out. That did happen, and then snake's just slithering by. Then you get into the moment where uh, Lemon does a smart because. Um, the father and the prince are walking by it it's weird her name is the prince in the script the movie and everything Mm -hmm. and the only reason that her name is that is because she's like oh my father wanted a boy yeah but her father did have a boy exactly and we'll get into that a little bit later um so the prince which is pseudo antagonist basically they have this whole situation where um lemon's like oh by the way have you seen this have you seen um my luggage with a uh thomas the tank engine sticker on it yes and she's like hmm weird that's crazy no but i haven't seen a briefcase with this sticker R- wait thomas the tank engine that's oddly specific and he's like yeah no it is and he walks away this and one more thing you know, because it's a train, most people assume it's like, you know, luggage, carry-on. I never specified yeah. briefcase. Yeah. Cause gotcha. One of the things is Lemon's supposed to be good at reading people. Yeah, he's the reader, and he's like the emotional one. 
And then Tangerine is more of the brute force one that can just whoop someone's ass. Yes. Uh, I believe... <clears throat> did did Lemon have the water bottle at this point? I think that's yes, how he gets knocked af- out. After yeah. uh, Brad Pitt and Lemon have a fight earlier, uh, to where Brad Pitt just rocks their shit in the silent room. Uh, yes. Where people are trying to sleep. Uh, Brad Pitt basically puts this weird drug inside of the water for some reason. I think assuming that Tangerine's going to drink yeah. it. Because it was on Tangerine's side. So he put that there. And then um, the whole time, mind you, this is a Fiji water. Yeah. Uh, it tells you this the entire time. Yeah, the entire movie. <laughs> and he drinks the Fiji water. And he keeps drinking this drugged Fiji water. And when he's interrogating them, uh, by them, I mean Lemon interrogating uh, the father and the prince. Yes. He, he f- goes who's the leader then the prince is like oh he was a bad man he kidnapped me he's putting me up all this stuff Ooh, hoo, hoo. yeah that's and, that's where he shoots because the scene you mentioned where he like says the briefcase thing happens after this and that's when he right. figures out she was lying and she he's like okay i know you are saying that he is the leader of this whole thing and he's giving me the vibe that it looked that he's the leader but something's telling me that you're the one behind all this. And then he points the gun back at her. Yeah. And he says, you know what? I'm going to do this in one of two ways. Just to make it fair. I'm either going to... A. Shoot whoever raises their hand at the leader. But if you both put your hands up and point at each other... I'm just going to kill you both. Yeah. Just to make it easier, because fuck you. Yeah. I like how it's like, we could skip through everything. But if it's involving Lemon, you're like, no. Here's how the whole scene went. Because I love Lemon, he's the best boy. <laughs> that this is the scene too, where it's after all that happens, he calls her a diesel. He's like, "You are the diesel," because he's like, "We we have a diesel on this train. You're the one. I figured it out." And so they drag. Uh, he shoots the father. They drag the father's body to the bathroom, and that diesel thing plays into a very big importance yep. because the drug starts kicking in slowly for him. And basically, the moment before he passes out, he somehow plants a diesel sticker because he has the entire Thomas the Tank Engine stickers on him. Yep. He plants a diesel sticker on the back of her neck without her realizing it. More over her hair. Yeah. And so when he passes out, she takes the gun and just starts lighting him up. Yep. Throws, throws his body into it and later on Tangerine finds out that his brother was quote unquote killed yeah. and then puts the uh necklace that they have as like brothers on his neck mm-hmm. and then later on in the movie you quickly uh have this really badass moment where the girl is running tangerine finds her she immediately goes help help i was kidnapped blah, blah. you know she does this whole like oh help me pity me kind of thing yes and then when tangerine uh goes to basically look at it, see what's going on and tries to help her he notices the diesel sticker on the back of the neck yep and in perfect poetry he goes you're the fucking diesel this entire time <laughs> you killed my brother <laughs> he points the gun at him and then uh, stupid brad pitt gets involved yep and he all he sees is man pointing gun at young girl oh no i must save her I must be uh, Chad and protect a young girl. And in which to fight an yeah. off-screen shooting of the face. Yeah, his bumbling nonsense where it shoots him. It's worse because it shoots Tangerine shoots himself in like the neck. So he's trying to say to Brad Pitt as he's like gurgling on the ground, like ah, she's the Diesel. And he, when he dies, Brad Pitt's like, "What the fuck's a Diesel?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um. Brad Pitt's character does the most annoying thing because before all this happened, uh, he finds out that there's this lady who is another assassin on the train and the Hornet who basically works in Molly Poisons. She's the reason why the wolf came onto the train to yep. find out who the killer was. Yep. She was the reason why the brother got poisoned yep. and she's the reason why the snake was stolen and now she's here to kill Brad Pitt. Mind you, yes. she was dressed up as this weird oxalotl mascot Yeah, whatever got beaten the... up by everyone. <laughs> Yeah, the Japanese, whatever it was. But that's how she was able to poison the sun in the first place. So Right. And then we get this really cool scene. Uh, well, not really cool. 
we get this badass fight scene where she's constantly trying to stick a needle into Brad Pitt. They keep fighting. And then Brad Pitt basically uh, gets her injected with her own poison and venom. And yeah, they're both injected. While she's dying. Yeah. Both when Tangerine's dying and when the Hornet's dying, Brad Pitt's just an asshole and goes, do you want me to hold your hand? Do you need a towel? Do you need me to what? come for you? Do what? you need water? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, she's dying. Well, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear of you dying, dumbass. Like, basically, <laughs> I was just egging them on the whole time. I was like, this, this is another, like, what the fuck? Why? What is happening? Like, why well, you gotta be an asshole? You were just saying, like, you, namaste, peace and love, and eye for eye. Pointing the finger, you got four fingers pointing at you back. Wait, that's three fingers. Yeah, and then... Shit like that. She dies, and the only reasonable thing he decides to do is to position her across from the wolf, also dead, sitting back with glasses on her face. That now we have two dead people just positioned against the window. Yep, and well, third, if you want to count the uh, the white death son who's yeah. also positioned with glasses. <laughs> so there's just three dead bodies on this train. No one's really yep. bad an eye. Gunshots are on the train. No one really cares. Yep. Well, the train slowly, if you, is emptying out of people, and there's, like, less and less uh, civilians as it goes on. Right. And it's because we're reaching the dead end of the train. Like, every yep. train, just like a bus, has, like, a stopping point before it has to go back to the station and get repairs, etc. Yeah. So, as we get closer, we get closer to the point where we find out that the White Death is going to be waiting at the end for them. And is going to try and kill them all. Yeah. Um, this is. I think this is when everyone wakes up. This is the point where everyone wakes up. Beforehand, yeah. uh, we get this elderly man named the Elder who yes. sits across from Brad Pitt and the Prince because basically, uh, she convinced Brad Pitt to protect her the entire time. Yeah, that's when he uh, killed Tangerine. Correct. Yeah, like yeah. right after he killed Tangerine, they were trying to get off the train, and then she kind of lured Brad Pitt back onto the train. Because she still wants to get her end goal of assassinating the White Death. Yes. And she was going to use Brad Pitt as the new scapegoat. Yeah, she course, gets him. With the father being dead, she can't yes. use him. I was just going to say, another thing that pissed me off is she gets him to stay on the train the stupidest way possible. She's like, no, my backpack's stuck. And he's like, just just leave it. Come on, get off the train. He's outside the door. And she's like, but I can't. It's stuck. I can't. And I'm just like. Oh, no, fucking, no, this is stupid. This is really stupid. And he walks back on, like, his in-character character character is like, this is fucking stupid. Walks back onto the train. He walks in, and she's standing there like, I'm ready to go. Sorry. Like, uh, why? And this is when I was audibly like, you know, if I was Brad Pitt, I'd be like, all right, cool, have fun with White Death, and I just walked off. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck fuck her. I I have no... moral conscious to protect this girl yeah she looks like a grown-ass girl she can be a grown-ass girl she can deal with death and I was <laughs> dim. but no the movie had us tack on for another 30 minutes for some reason yep this movie is longer so then right afterwards um we meet this man named the elder who basically they have this uh very intense conversation where brad pitt's like i'm not gonna ask you to move again leave us alone you're creeping me out brad pitt then immediately gets Bitten by the fucking Billisong snake. Yes. <laughs> and goes, ah, ah, and just starts punching the snake and then flushes yeah. it down a toilet. <laughs> he puts it in the toilet because he, he has to like wrap it up with his jacket. And when he shuts the toilet, he writes, snake in toilet, do not open. <laughs> and then goes back to the situation. In the meantime of him fighting the snake, <laughs> uh, the elder basically confronts the girl. Because mind you, earlier exposition that we missed, um when the father was in the room with the prince the bathroom and they're gonna do the briefcase thing that's when she's like hey you're gonna uh you're gonna take this phone call that you're getting and then we find out that it's the father's father the grandfather of the son who's like hey you what's going on oh i found the person dad did you report to authorities no i want to do it myself you dumbass yeah and then he the elder hears her on the, in the background on the phone saying think about it he figures Thus, out that yeah she's the one who did everything push the grandson off and she's all like well i'm gonna you better worry about your grandson and he's like i'm not fucking stupid if you have anyone trying to hurt him he's safe 
and it cuts away to the guy who's been like looming over the grandson and the nerf just like comes in and fucking assassinates him and i was like oh shit and, uh, yeah that made me go damn this elder's got like assassins on standby that's cool <laughs> as hell <laughs> and so she's like fine then if no one wants to kill the white death i'll kill him myself and then she storms off like a little brat yep brad pitt comes back and then they have a heart to heart then they go and find uh, the father, which is now the elder son. So we're just going to keep calling him the father. We yeah. find the father in Lemon, where they start to wake up. Yeah. The, They've been asleep for three hours. Yeah, the father shrugs off two gunshots. Uh, Lemon had a bulletproof vest, so his makes more sense. But, you know. And then he notices that his necklace is on. Yeah. And goes, where the fuck's my brother? Mm-hmm. And and the only part of the movie that made me go like, damn, this is really sad. This this pissed me off that it got me. I was so angry that I was sad. Because I was like, this movie's fucking stupid. And when this scene happened, I go, No, you're not doing this to me. No, no, no. Uh, I'm feeling things. I hate you. <laughs> Cause they they had a really good build up for the love and connection that the lemon and, and tangerine had for each other. Yeah. Because they showed a little like flashback to when they were kids. And Lemon's sitting at the TV watching Thomas the Tank Engine while playing with a little wooden tank. And mm-hmm. Tangerine's just watching his brother being so excited. They have, like, this true brotherly connection. And the pain that you see on Tangerine's face when he thought Lemon's dead just works so well. If you had yeah. a movie just about these two, I would have loved it a lot more. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and then we get, going back to what we are talking about, Lemon just sits right next to his bro, talk, talks to him, like a heart-to-heart. Yeah. Even though he's dead, and just puts the t- he's like you know, I called I called you a diesel earlier, but honestly you're you're really a Thomas, and puts the sticker in his hand and holds his brother's hand. Yeah, he was like, "You are the Thomas of this world," and I was like, "No, <laughs> stop this." And I was like, "Damn it! Why is it so sad? This movie sucks." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This movie's stupid. Why, Why am I sad? <laughs> Why is this hitting a mental tempo? Fuck. I had to explain this to Derek on our way to a movie today. I was fucking angry that it made me sad. And he's laughing the whole way we're going there. Like, that's stupid. I need to watch this movie. <laughs> so afterwards, they everyone's uh, sitting around each other. And they're getting to a very, like, violent argument about, you, you, shot, uh, you shot and killed my brother. Well, you shot my son. And everyone's, like, just fighting with each other. And yes. the elder's like, look, we're not going to get anywhere bickering and bitching. We have to kill and fight the White Death as a team. Yep. And then Brad Pitt's like, yeah, that's what I was trying to say the whole time. Like, shut the fuck up, Brad Pitt. No one wants you. <laughs> <laughs> You're pointless in this movie. You're just a popular name. Yeah, pretty much. So basically they have this really cool plan where Lemon uh, is going to – the train's going to stop at the next station. And it's going to be forced to stop because that's the last stop for the train. It's yep. automatic, basically. Lemon is going to start the train and keep it going once they somehow pass off the briefcase and uh, lure the uh, White Death onto the train to fight him by himself, basically. Right. And so the Elder and his son are hiding on the train, getting ready for a cool katana-based fight. Yeah. Brad Pitt goes out there, and then you get this cool scene uh, which introduces the White Death who's played by my favorite actor, Michael Shannon. Mm. Guy has like a fucking repertoire of movies and shows behind him. Yes. Um, Has this really cool thing where he's like, okay, cool. Well, I basically planned this entire thing to happen on the train. And I was hoping you all just kill each other because which they pretty much did, (laughs) which my wife's death was caused by an assassination attempt on me because someone wrecked a car into my wife's car. Yep. Which also the doctor who was supposed to save my wife got assassinated by the Hornet. Yep. And also this all started because the fucking twins, Lemon and Tangerine, killed my squad in Bolivia. Right. Wait a minute. He he said nothing about why the wolf was there, though. Because the, the wolf... Wo- the wolf was an accident. No, because the wolf learned... That the assassin was there from a piece of paper as well, didn't he? Because because I think what he was planning was he was planning to have the wolf kill the hornet. 
maybe. And the Hornet to kill everyone else. That lo- that was a plot hole, you're correct. Because I'm just kind of like, why the fuck was the wolf there to begin with? Who told him? I thought it was the White Death, but I'm like, why? He didn't have any beef with him. I think the whole thing was, ven- he knows vengeance is a very strong tool. So he was probably using the White Wolf, the wolf as a tool to kill the Hornet. Uh, okay, I guess. I, yeah. <laughs> and this is the part where Brad Pitt explained earlier that he filled in for Carver. Because Carver... That was the one who killed his wife. And we find out that Carver was Ryan Reynolds this entire time. Oh, yeah. That happens at the end of the movie, though, which is fucking stupid. He's got a gun on Brad Pitt. And he's like, I don't even know you. <laughs> he's like, I'm not Carver. I'm just a stand-in. Don't shoot me. <laughs> it's yeah, like... He's like, Carver had the stomach flu. So then, these, then you have this stupid little side banter with two of the White Death minions who are checking the briefcase like why the fuck do we have to check the briefcase it could if it's explode so safe, yeah if yeah. it's so safe why does he open it these yep. masks aren't gonna do shit for us yeah like it, understandable minion banter but it's like why yeah the rest of the movie is just one big action scene um, so oh yeah and beforehand before all that happens um we find out that the prince is actually the daughter of uh white death yeah is when white death gets on the train she has a pistol he's like my daughter what are you doing here it's like, yeah, I'm here to kill you, you bitch. He takes a gun and jokingly Father Manor goes, bang, bang. You would have yeah. been dead. You're not a part of my plan. Get the fuck out of here. And she just walks past her. Yeah, and the rest of the movie is the big dumb action scene. Um, Lemon makes a funny comment about how he gets to be Thomas because he's driving the train, but then realizes he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, he was like, there was no episodes in Japanese with subtitles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was... The, that was Ano- that was another part that had me laughing yeah uh and then what happened during this fight scene was the, your favorite product placement about the fiji bottle right uh, okay so yes can i, can I please <laughs> yes you could explain this so everything's going down south and this entire fight's breaking out right it's on a fight between the elder and the white death um lemon and ladybug basically fighting off against accusing members while they're trying to stop the train and all this shit's happening the water ball that knocked out Lemon from the beginning is rolling. Falls out of the trash can that was thrown in earlier. Starts rolling because the train gets destroyed slightly. And then perfectly gets into a position where someone grabs the bottle and throws it at White Death. <laughs> yep. And I wrote down as a note on my notes here. And mind you, the whole time, it's just on the Fiji logo. <laughs> it's yep. just on the Fiji logo. Hey, yep. And I said, Fiji, even assassins need hydration. Yeah. Did, <laughs> did you want to talk about what happens uh, right after he throws it? Uh, if I recall correctly, he misses his shot. No. The, all of the character intros that everyone has had, the Fiji water bottle gets one. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, the yeah. water bottle. <laughs> it, yeah. it, it cuts to it, and it's like, water bottle. And it fucking goes on a long explanation as to why the water bottle was where it was, how it started, how Lemon bought it, and it rolled around the fucking train the whole time. Lemon didn't mean to buy it. A girl bought it. It got stuck in the vending machine. Yeah. Lemon wanted a bubble ice, uh, bubble coffee tea. Yep. And then got the water bottle. Says, "Well, I guess I'm drinking this." Yep. And it's just been there in the entire movie. So, the movie has a whole uh, like basically theme of fate. Something. Everything's supposed to be where it's meant to be so the water is one of the things that's like what the movie's trying to get at but i just saw it as this movie sponsored by fiji fiji yep. we assassinate people and we hydrate them fuck you yep. you paid to see this movie if you watch in theaters <laughs> dumbass <laughs> basically so oh. fiji saves the day um the train then uh derails and crashes in the most brutal way possible and one of the most beautiful scenes of Brad Pitt slowly flying in the air while the train's just destroying the small little village. Yeah, how he conveniently flies through the train without getting hurt. Magically. Yep. And then somehow uh, we get to the part where he's just sitting outside of this wreckage. Oh, and beforehand, Lemon also flies out of the train because he tackled a guy who was going to shoot uh, Brad Pitt. And they both yep. fell into the river. Yep. Uh, and, and it's the end of the movie. The White Death tries to shoot brad pitt with the revolver and he's out of bullets so he switches to the other gun which is the booby trapped one and shoots himself the end yes um except for one oh great... you forgot 
the, the snake appears. Scene. The the snake appears again. Yeah, remember Brad Pitt's in there's like the fuck? Why is a the snake there? And then White Death comes out. Yeah. And White Death's like, is that a snake? And then goes back <laughs> to trying to kill him. Yeah, it's, 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 it's every time the fucking snake, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> So, after White Death assassinates himself, thanks to the gun that the prince um, messed with at the very beginning. Yeah, the prince shows up. She is such... I don't understand why she's trying to kill everyone at this point, because she got what she wanted. Yeah, because she's like, fuck you, I'm the greatest. And, by God, does she have an amazing death. A a tangerine truck runs her over. (laughs) Which, I was like... It happened, and I was like, what the fuck, why? The credits cut, and they come back, and it shows Lemon, where he gets out of the water, sees a tangerine truck, and goes, I'm coming for you, bitch. And you're just like, yes! Movie's finished. And he just drives and runs her over. (laughs) (laughs) Then then you get another product placement immediately afterwards. Uh, Well, before the whole, uh, what you see, the after credits... What happens to Lemon and how he kills the prince. You get another product placement that ends off the movie with uh, Sandra Bullock, who is Brad Pitt's handler the entire time. Yep. Pulls up in a brand new 2022 Lexus. I think it was an Audi, wasn't it? It was either an Audi or a Lexus, but it was the nicest looking car. And you could tell like the it looked like a commercial you'd see on a TV. Yep. And Brad Pitt goes, nice car. And then a telephone pole <laughs> just crushes it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then they walk away. So that movie was the over. movie. That was the movie. Um, if you're lost, then yes, you should yeah. be. Yeah, well, we uh, are too. This this movie was a series of events that was stringed together, where it was very clearly made in the sense of okay, so we want this random thing to happen, and then we'll justify it with some stupid cutscene, like five minutes later. Oh, okay, that's how we're gonna write this movie. Uh. Yeah, so for incoherently coherent thoughts that are wound together with random bullshit, occasionally funny every so often, um, and a antagonist, it, she really is the main antagonist because the main antagonist doesn't show up until the end of the movie. He's talked about. He's like an overarching theme, basically. Uh, yeah, but it's also like i don't know anyway it, it was very rough and i would say for those i don't know if you've seen this movie marcus but for those who are listening at home i would compare this to the movie reservoir dogs by uh, quentin tarantino but done very poorly with a higher budget and more modern like specs because that's what it felt like it was just so offbeat it kept going back and forth with storytelling it's hard to follow yep uh, it's just really rough. That's that's this whole movie. Uh, I enjoyed talking about this movie because I, I feel like that's maybe why it was created. Is just And then this happened because it's just so stupid. While you're watching it, you're not like, haha, that's funny. You're like, why? Why? It's for after the fact to talk about it like this. Uh, so afterwards, talking about it, that's the fun part. Watching the movie, not so great. Um the soundtrack was good. Uh, the movie was very beautiful. The movie itself was really stupid. I would not watch this again, ever. Same. Uh, unless it was a drinking game in some fashion of every time it's supposed to be funny, take a drink. Um, every time you you mentally or physically go, what the fuck? Take a drink. Yep, there we go. Every, every for, time Brad Pitt tries to do this namaste guru shit, take a drink. Yeah, uh, please don't actually do that. You will die. Every um, time Lemon mentions tanks, take a drink. <laughs> so uh, anytime they mention the white death without white death man scene take a drink anytime prince does some stupid shit take a drink like dude you could literally die of alcohol poisoning by playing a drinking game with this it's so bad it's so bad uh my final score i don't think it's worse than a four i'm gonna give it a four it was bad but it wasn't like henry bad i think this is probably one of the worst movies that i've seen uh since we started this to be honest with you you hated this more than henry yeah um, wow good job bullet train I hated good this, job i hated this more than henry because at henry i at least started off giving it a noble five this started off as a three and is staying at a three because right. i did not like the story i did not like the pacing you can you can make a movie with good sound design 
but yeah. it at least should have decent storytelling and like characters that I actually care about. It did, and Lemon and Tangerine, <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep that shit out of three. And before we end this, I have uh, Carlos's notes here. Ah, okay. What did Carlos say? Please let all of the wonderful, beautiful listeners. Uh, I am now leaving your closet. You're now welcome to leave. Uh, you won't know what the next week's movie is if you leave now, but uh, you've been released from this video now. We're now talking about Carlos' opinion, which doesn't matter because he <laughs> wasn't here. So Carlos, for once, sent me his uh, actual notes of what he thought. He mm -hmm. said, I thought it was fun. Story was decent. And the comedy action moments were kind of like, you could tell it was being ha what, what was going to happen happened. Yeah. Like, it was just very straightforward. Slightly better than mid, but not as bad as some other sixes that we've gauged in the past. He yeah. gives it a seven. Jesus. And it's okay to be wrong, Carlos, because I give it a three and Marcus gave it a four. So this movie kind of sucked in my opinion. See, this is why I was saying, I, I could tell just from the trailer, like, this was a movie we should have watched together. Because we would have liked it a lot more if we were ripping on it while we were watching it. Um, Agreed. But at the same time... I would have just been like, oh, why? Yeah. I, did not, I did not like it. This movie was a diesel. <laughs> <laughs> RR -R is the Thomas. That's right. Hardcore Henry's the Percy. <laughs> uh, uh, he also started off with his non-spoiler one. I, I didn't get to see it in time because we started this after, mm -hmm. uh, no, before he sent me this. Uh, he said he would have started non spoiler at a seven, and then he would have finished off as a seven. Okay, so Carlos is wrong. What else is new? Um, yeah, that has been our review of the Bullet Train, and uh, as for next week, we are going to be watching. Uh, let me pull up the name of it exactly again, uh, Dylan. If you want to entertain them while I'm looking this up again. Ah uh, yes. Today's video is sponsored by Fiji. Fiji. What the fuck? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. Uh, okay. Marcus I is looking it. for the movie. Uh, so the movie I picked. Uh, it is not a two-hour movie. It is, is a thirty-minute movie, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's it's like an hour and twenty minutes. Uh, oh. It is. A Witcher movie on Netflix. It's called The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf. I believe it is about um, Geralt's mentor. Uh, what's his name again? Oh, the animated movie that dropped. Yes, because it looks really good. I love everything about The Witcher world. Uh, big fan of it. Love Henry Cavill as The Witcher. Sad to see him go. Um... So yeah, I I believe this is the right one that I saw, because it's it's supposed to be, um, hour and twenty three minutes. Yeah, I believe that's the right one. That's the only other Witcher movie I'm seeing on here. Okay, then that is the one. Alrighty, y'all. Well, we thank you so much for uh, watching. Yes, thank you so much for being here. Um. Uh, if you ever need me to be in your closet while watching a movie, just let me know. I am always and never present. Don't worry about it. There's nothing underneath your bed tonight. Uh, the monsters are definitely not coming from you. And my shadow demons will be joining me as per usual. Am, am I a shadow? Am I one of your shadow demons? I am a skeleton. I don't know. Don't, don't worry about it too much. If you overthink it, you might think yourself out of existence if you are my shadow demon. So. Marcus, I don't like the idea of you conjuring me. Yep. Anyway. Bye, everybody. That's my life. Help! <laughs>